And they asked you about your virginity, your, your sex life. It was shocking. I mean, it damaged me. I was broken. My, my spirit was kind of pressed on all sides. He said, oh, it's no question you're fired, and that I had a dirty face in the photo, and it wasn't classy. Looking at these two images, what's your reaction to the fact that you were fired for this one and asked to pose for this one? It just shows you the control that they want to have over us. Former NFL cheerleaders Kristen Ann Ware and Bailey Davis say they're done being sidelined, now fighting back against what they allege is gender discrimination by their teams and the National Football League highlighting a double standard now resonating in the Me Too era. There's such a sense of control and ownership that they have over you, not only on the field in your uniform, but in your personal life as well. Cheering for the NFL was their dream job, which they both did for three years, they say without a single write-up. But beneath all the glamour, they say was something ugly that left them feeling shattered. Kristen Ann danced for the Miami Dolphins. That's her in the team's promo video. Bailey cheered for the New Orleans Saints and can also be spotted in this Saints-Sations video. For Bailey, cheering is practically a family business. Her mom was even a coach. She says she was fired after putting this one photo on social media, deemed a violation of policy, according to Saints management. I was shocked. Well, I'm assuming he meant it was a sexual picture, and he told me by posting it I was seeking players' attention. But when I posted it, it was a full body shot for dance auditions. It looked athletic. This is a sanctioned photo. Which one do you think shows more skin? <laughs> I think the one on the left, and they actually picked out that swimsuit for me. She says the team tightly controlled her image, and unfair standard that didn't apply to players. They can post shirtless and it's seen as athletic. They can post with alcohol and promote the brand. They can make extra money promoting brands doing underwear modeling for Nike and I can't do anything like that. Bailey says cheerleaders depend on their social media accounts to market themselves. It's a big part of getting out there and being discovered. Since 2014 there have been several lawsuits against NFL teams over unfair pay. None of the teams admitted wrongdoing, but four settled, with some cheerleaders receiving a payout. When you calculate the makeup, the spray tans, your nails done, it comes out even. You broke even. Mm -hmm. Bailey says cheerleaders face other extreme restrictions. They are forbidden from being seen in close proximity or socializing with any players or management or coaches. If caught, it's grounds for immediate termination. It's our job to stay away from these restaurants, from these bars, and on the field to not make eye contact. So one time there was a player actually standing in the doorway of our locker room, and we had to stand there and wait for him to finish his granola bar before we could walk into our locker room. On the field, you can clearly see Bailey dancing alongside the players in this St. Sations video. But off the field, they must block players on social media and avoid all contact. What were they so afraid of? They said it was for our protection. They, they told us, they're like, you're pretty girls. It's happened in the past. They're going to try to talk to you. And then they say the players are players. They just want to use you. As a cheerleader, you've worked your whole life to get here, but you have to keep looking over your shoulder everywhere you go because what happens if a player's in here and I get caught being in the same location? So it gives them fear. Bailey's lawyer, Sarah Blackwell, says the fraternization policy is a textbook case of gender discrimination. As an employment lawyer, you're like, wow, you never get this, this kind of stuff that's so blatant. The Saints especially talked about their players as predators, and to me that's offensive to the football player. And it's their job, the cheerleader's jobs, to run away. The team told ABC News the New Orleans Saints is an equal opportunity employer, and it denies that Ms. Davis was discriminated against because she is female. And the organization is confident that its policies and workplace rules will withstand legal scrutiny. Like Bailey, Kristen Ann says she too felt silenced and humiliated when she claims her coaches brought up her decision to remain a virgin until marriage. She interrupted me and told me that as far as they're concerned, I've taken something that was once upon a time pure and beautiful and I've made it dirty. It broke me a little bit. To tell me that my virginity is dirty is almost as if you're saying God is dirty. A born again Christian, Kristen Ann says she made a purity pledge at age 14 and never hid her religious convictions, even using her public Instagram account to share her beliefs. 
The team's co-captain and a fan favorite endured what she says amounts to religious discrimination and retaliation. She says she was told by a superior to no longer discuss her virginity. I felt like the way that I was being treated, they were making me choose. Do you want to be a Christian or do you want to be a cheerleader? She says she eventually reported the alleged mistreatment to Miami Dolphins Human Resources, but she says reporting only made it worse. I had to give it to God, and having him was more important than losing my identity in the uniform, so I quit. I saw the football players praying on the field publicly, able to express their faith without limitations. And I have to stand there with, you know, a smile on my lips and hands on my hips, and just feel like I'm in a trapped cage where I have to be silent about God. Her lawyer says cheerleaders are often intimidated into remaining silent. You're not special. Uh, you're just the girl in the uniform. We'll put it on someone else. The Miami Dolphins has told ABC News we are committed to providing a positive work environment for everyone associated with the organization. We hold every member of our organization to the same standards and do not discriminate as it relates to gender, race, and religious beliefs. The employment contracts Bailey and Kristen Ann signed prevent them from suing, so they've filed complaints against their teams and the NFL with the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission and a Florida agency. Our goal is to be heard. They say they're willing to settle their gender discrimination claims for a dollar apiece if Commissioner Roger Goodell would agree to a four-hour good-faith meeting. Not many people get four-hour meetings with Roger Goodell. <laughs> what would you say to him? We're not placing blame, we're not asking for an apology or anything, but we're hoping to reach the goal of having fair and equal rules that are free of discrimination. The NFL has told ABC News they support fair employment practices. Everyone who works in the NFL, including cheerleaders, has the right to work in a positive and respectful environment that is free from any and all forms of harassment and discrimination and fully complies with state and federal laws. Blackwell says the league has until this Friday to respond to their settlement agreement. What role, if any, do you think the players play in all this? I just would be so excited if a football player said, you know what, we don't want that in our league. We want gender to be e equal, you know, and I feel like the football players haven't said anything. For now, Kristen Ann and Bailey say they're cheering for themselves and other women. Don't be silent. Know your worth and stand up for yourself and that this is the year of the woman. Mm -hmm. And we are stronger when we stand together and empower each other and we do not have to be treated as anything less than a man. I want women to know that they are here not only just to be seen and looked at, but they have a God-given voice. And you can use that to make a difference and we can empower women.